Good morning, students. Today we will have to discuss the molecular basis of inheritance. And in this particular chapter, we have discussed previously the structure of the DNA. In that particular structure, we have discussed that the DNA is double stranded, anti parallel structure where pyrimidine and purine are present in the center and they are connected with the sugar molecule and both the sugar the sugar molecule will connected with the phosphate molecule and by this structure we can say that if it is the adenine then it is thymine and this one is the nucleotide and this one is the nucleotide if the sugar molecules have third on this position then it is fifth just reverse it is fifth and this is the third then if you draw a diagram like this then if it is fifth then this one is the fifth so it is anti parallel but it is anti but parallel so we can say that this type of nucleotides arranged in the particular way to form a dna strand and after that after formation what happens they will form a uh, helix like structure in this particular structure you will see that the this uh, t a it is adenosine monophosphate this will be the adenosine monophosphate means adenine plus sugar that is adenosine and if the phosphate molecule is added here then it is called adenosine mono phosphate this is one of the nucleotide and the abbreviation is amp like that gmp cmp gmp and ump are the five nucleotides among them these four are responsible for the formation of the dna We have discussed that the, the distance between these two is 20 angstrom and we mark here that it is about 3 angstrom, this one is about 4.7 angstrom, this one is about 3.3 angstrom and this is 4.5 angstrom and this one is the 4.5 angstrom. So the total strength is the uh, 20, 20 angstrom and this one is the 11 angstrom. This is the width of the DTA. Now, according to Watson and Crick, DNA is double helical, double stranded, anti parallel double stranded helical strand. Now, how this helix is formed? This one is the helix. Suppose suppose this one is the a helix. It is made up of the two strands. One is this. Another is And in between these two, this is called one helix. One helix, and the distance of this one helix is 34 angstrom. And the Watson and Crick who do their work on the DNA, particular DNA, that is BDNA. BDNA right handed DNA having 10 nucleotides, 10 pair of nucleotides 
10 pairs of nucleotides are present in one helix and their distance is 34 angstrom so the in between two its distance is 3.4 now we will have to discuss the base pairing in this particular degree. base pairing we know that adenine and guanine both are purine cytosine and thymine both are pyramid In a typical DNA, which is double stranded, it should be, should be double. It is in certain viruses it has been observed that the certain DNAs are single stranded also. But we are discussing about the double stranded. In double stranded here, stranded DNA, A is always paired with the T, and having two hydrogen bond. One is called alpha uh, pi bond and that is called sigma bond. One is called pi bond and another is called sigma bond. Any of you. Now in G that is the word GMP guanosine monophosphate paired with the C that is called cytidine monophosphate. Here pi bond pi bond and sigma bond. It is also hydrogen bond. When a uh, A with C S plus P then it is called adenosine monophosphate. It is guanosine monophosphate and this is called thymidine monophosphate and this is called cytidine monophosphate cytidine monophosphate dean it means pyrimidine c it means purine it means a and g is purine and c and t is the so this is the base pairing. Now, Charles Gauss rule. Charles Gauss has proposed a particular type of the rule pairing on the on in for the double stranded DNA. And according to Charles Gauss rule, the A is always equal to T, and G is always equal to C. A upon T is equal to 1. The same way G upon C is equal to 1. It means the number of A plus G is always equal to number of T plus C but it is not essential that the A plus T is equal to G plus C it is not essential, it may be not equal. This one, this is proposed by the chart graphs. Now, the DNA mainly we have discussed that the two types that is called double standard and single standard, but on the basis of the uh, nucleotide pair present in a helix and their clockwise or anti-clockwise helix, helix it can be divided into A, B, C, D and Z this is the five types of the DNH among them Watson and Crick studied on this one 
it has 11 pair of nucleotides it has 10 pair of nucleotides it has 9.93 it means each and every helix have not the equal number of the nucleotides in case of the dDNA it has 8 pairs of nucleotides and it is one of the unique DNA having 12 pairs of nucleotides in one helix all are right handed but it is left handed generally it has been seen that the B DNA and the Z DNA on the basis of the B DNA and Z DNA the maximum questions are asked in competition or others now there are certain unique sequence in DNA and on the basis of that DNA sequence a term palindrome palindromic segment of the DNA in this DNA suppose this one is the 3 end and this one is the 5th end then this one is the 5th end and this one is the 3rd end if you study A, A, T, T, C, G, A, A, T, T. Suppose this one is the sequence of uh, nucleotides in one direction. Then what happens? Pairing A, T to A, T to A, A to T, A to T, G to C, C to G, T to A, T to A, A to T and A to T. We can see here that the, when we move from 3 to 5 directions, the A, A, T, T, C, G, A, A, T, T. Here you will see that the Again, we when you move from 3 to 5 direction, the same nucleotides are present here. This type of sequencing is called palindromic sequence and that will be used in the formation of the, um, in the study of the nuclear or the uh, genetic engineering. Now, we will have to study DNA is a genetic material. For this purposes, so many experiments have been performed and today we will have to, I am just going to discuss about the Griffith experiment. Griffith experiment. Griffith study on pneumonia coccus and we know that the pneumonia coccus is of two types one is the smooth pneumonia and another is the rough pneumonia P coccus is of two types smooth type and rough type due to presence of the certain coat this pneumonia is smooth pneumonia and this one is the rough Griffith experiment, Griffith perform an experiment on smooth pneumonia third and rough pneumonia second. In addition of this pneumonia, uh, this pneumonia, pneumonia coccus, he take the mice for the experiment and he start to perform this experiment. In first step, what happens? In first step, rough strain has been injected to mouse. 
what happens? No pneumonia. Because the smooth stem of the pneumonia is virulent and the rough is non-virulent. It means smooth is a disease causing and rough is non disease causing. And here it has been seen that there is no any casualty or the 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 mice become no. Now in second stage, what happens? The smooth is injected in mice. What happens? All mice are dead. Death of the mice. It means this is smooth is responsible for the pneumonia and ultimately the pneumonia dies. But uh, it is not the proof that the DNA is genetic material. Now what happens in third stage? He inject heat killed smooth variety of pneumonia. It has been observed there is no casualty or no death. But whenever it, this is the true condition when the rough is injected, there is no pneumonia. When the heat kill smooth is injected, there is no pneumonia. Now what happens in fourth stage? What happens? The rough plus heat kill smooth pneumonia is injected, then it has been observed that the mice is not in survival condition and they die. Now, on the basis of this experiment, he told that the, the heat killed DNA will form on rough DNA the smooth type of the pneumonia and ultimately this is the cause of the DNA. But uh, due to this incomplete experiment, the scientists are not ready to accept the work and not ready to conclude that the DNA is genetic. After 16 years of the their experiment, after 16 years of their experiment, years of their experiment, again the three scientists start to perform the same work on the on that particular. Uh, that, that direction which will be proposed by the Griffiths. Again, they perform this thing and he select three types of the now rough, no effect, smooth death and a smooth heat killed a smooth plus rough no effect heat killed no, sorry. Uh, heat killed heat killed smooth no effect and the fourth that is the heat kill smooth plus rough. Both separately, heat killed smooth and rough smoothly. Separately no effect, but when they combine, it has been seen that the mice dies. Now again, they perform an experiment on this particular. When the heat killed smooth plus rough. Now, the question will be right that the it may be protein that is responsible for the death of the mice. It may be uh, uh, RNA they are responsible for the death of the, it may be, may be DNA. Then it has been observed that the, by the use of the RNAs, protease and DNA. 
these three types of enzymes are into, introduced in this uh, type of the tube separately then it has been observed whenever the RNA is introduced the death rate is same whenever the protein is introduced there is no any change in this particular death rate but if the DNA is introduced then it has been observed that there is no death it means the DNA is responsible for this type of the formation of the smooth and ultimately with the help of this and their scientists now great experiment is performed that DNA is only genetic material not the RNA now in the next lecture we will discuss about the other experiments in favor of the DNA genetic